everyone, it's Gavin from Balls To You. Into today's video, we're gonna be looking at spot cleaning, and in particular, how I spot clean. Now, it just purely by coincidental, I have a Repti Block hoodie on. Purely coincidental, guys, trust me. A massive thanks to Doris and the team over at Repti Globe for producing Repti Block, which for me is a fantastic product. If you haven't tried Repti Block yet, find a UK distributor. I know Boss Rat stock it. Get over, give it a try, guys. Trust me, I, I'm pretty confident you won't be disappointed. RepTiBlock has taken the UK by storm, and everyone that's tried it are loving it. So get over, if you haven't already, get over to BossRat, hit them up, and I know there's a few other people in the UK who distribute it. I only distribute it to my Patreon members, but get over, give it a try, guys. So I'm gonna shut up. Let's get into today's video, spot cleaning. Let's go. So let's look at this female. So this is how we we typically spot clean. We spot clean once a week. Now we're going to be looking at females and if you guys go back to the last video you'll see exactly why I do what I do regarding breeder females. But what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how we spot clean. So basically what we'll do for example we'll take this tub like so um, we may remove the female Come on, sweetheart, good girl. Just put her in a secondary bin, and then we'll pick out, obviously, any bits of shed, um, any bits of urate that's lying around. We'll spot clean it like so. Just check, we've got everything out. It's urate, like so. So typically what we'll do, like I said, we'll spot clean it, we'll get all the bits and pieces that we don't want out. And then there's, if there's any marks or anything up the side of the tub, we'll use our Repti spray, which I can highly recommend guys. We'll just spray a little bit on a cloth log so, and then just go around the edges of the tub, wherever there's marks, you know, if they've finger painted with their poo, because they can and they will, like down there, we'll just go in there like so. Don't need much, just a little squirt, and away you go. So we'll do that typically, and that's that part. Obviously at this point, we're gonna get rid of the water, and we're gonna remove some of the substrate. So what I'll do, I'll, we've got a, a secondary bin, which, you know, all the, the old uh, coconut bedding will go in and it goes on the garden. Again, all about recycling and all that sort of stuff. So what I'll do, I'll tend to take some of the older stuff from the back and we'll get rid of it. And then we'll move the stuff from the front to the back. And you're probably asking me why. As a year right, we'll get rid of that. As you can see now, we've moved a lot of the, the stuff from the front, the, the bedding to the back, okay? And again, if it needs a bit of a wipe down, give it a wipe down. Now, the next thing I'll do is we'll get rid of the water. Uh, like I said, we'll either, um, you know, tip it over here because the waters are done on a regular basis. So obviously we don't want to waste water. So we'll use that for humidity, okay? Being brutally honest, if the water bowls are hideously dirty, they will get changed. If they're not too bad, they will get wiped out. Again, guys, this is reality. I'm not here to say spend your money on tubs and, and all deli cups and all that. If they're reusable, use it. Let's face it, do our bit for the planet as well, because they are plastic. So why not, like I said, do our bit for the planet. We'll take our deli cup. We'll give it a wipe out. Like so, okay, and we'll put that back in there. Okay, the next thing I'll do, I'll put the fresh bedding at the front. And what we'll do, we'll get rid of the, the old bedding towards the back, and then we'll move everything towards the back, and then the fresh bedding goes at the front. Now, like I said, guys, when we're spot cleaning, that's exactly what we're doing. We're just picking out the spots and making it sort of clean that week. Now, when you do a deep clean, you may do it once a month, you may do it once every two weeks, you may do it once every two months. It's entirely up to you. The one thing I have learned over the years is if you disturb this species too much, they will go off food. I had a guy come to me and he was advised to clean his animals out every week. And he was advised by another breeder that that's how you do it, da 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 and he was having loads of issues with his animals not feeding. So I just said, look, 
give it two weeks don't spot don't spot clean don't clean uh, just leave them alone and literally no word of a lie left them alone on the third week he went to offer it food it smacked all of all of these animals smashed the food. He was having problems with like three or four of them. All three or four of them that were struggling to feed actually started smashing food. These animals like their own smell. Even though we don't like it and we want to make sure they've got clean bedding, all that sort of stuff, at the end of the day, this is their bed, this is their little house, this is what they want, okay? So if you are struggling with animals that aren't feeding, just try leaving them for a few weeks. You know, if it's really bad, spot clean it, guys. I'm not saying, you know, leave it in a mess, but trust me about this. You, you know, I've been doing this a number of years. I have fantastic success with feeding animals, and many people over the years have been too OCD with their cleaning and it's created problems. And some breeders go, oh, you know, I clean every day and I don't have any problems. Well, take that for what you want to take it. This is just, you know, if you are struggling, this will help, I promise you. So what we've done, we've pushed the bedding towards the back. Now, the snake, my snakes are predominantly in the middle. They like the hot spots and they've got the cool spot and they've got the hot spot, but they like the spot in the middle it sort of gives them that, that happy medium of a temperature. So what I'll do now, I'll put some fresh bedding uh, in the front and I'll have the older bedding towards the back which still has their scent on it because it is their scent. And how many of you guys have been, let's say you've cleaned all your snakes and you've gone in the next day and most of them have gone to the bathroom in the corner and you think, oh, I've just cleaned you out, you know, and they've gone to the toilet. That's not necessarily them going to the toilet, that's them actually scenting their tub. So to try and eliminate that or to try and keep them feeling comfortable, I don't go mad with changing the bedding, especially during the breeding season. Anyway, so now we're gonna put some fresh bedding at the front. I do use RepTiBlock, Breeder Block. Um, at the minute, um, I use the Hatchling Block for all my hatchlings, but I've started using the Hatchling Block uh, in with my females, especially the females which are laying eggs. So I, I think it makes more of a natural sort of like nesting for them. And, and you'll see, and I'll show you some, some examples, um, but yeah, it, it works fantastic. So we've got some of the hatchling bedding over here. And all I'll do is I'll just simply put it at the front. Say there, sweetheart. Like so. We'll put some fresh water in, dump the bedding down a little bit, and then she's good to go back in. Come on, sweetheart, good girl. There you go. So that's basically how I spot clean. And for me, it works, I like it. I like the fact that, you know, we're not doing a full clean, so she doesn't feel stressed out, especially during the breeding season. But she's enjoying the fact that she's got some fresh bedding as well fresh water and like i said we spot clean once a week and they get fresh water probably once every um, once every two days something like that so that's how i spot clean that's how i do it um, the hatchling bedding from reptiblock is awesome if you haven't tried it try it if you are thinking about going on to coconut bedding um trust me guys find a supplier within the uk i i only supply my patreons but trust me it is worth doing it i absolutely love the hatchling bedding the hatchlings love it and the the females when they're laying eggs i've just got a female on eggs now and she's made this cool little nest and i'm really excited because it's that time of year so hopefully this helps guys hopefully it gives you some indication on how i do things and whether you guys do it differently that's cool whatever works for you guys again it's whatever works for you which is important it's the animals are also you know their health is also critical all my snakes are healthy. I have no issues whatsoever because otherwise I wouldn't be doing it this way. Let's face it. So hope you're all well. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Hope it's been kind of educational for you. And again, guys, get over and follow Repti Global um, over on Instagram and show them some support because they really are behind the community. Okay, guys, take care. I'll see you guys on the next one. I hit record a jump, you can't ignore it. I'm transforming.